today we're going to be crocheting this really elegant wine bottle gift tote that's sort of a Christmas theme. And for our wine tote, I am working with the Lily Sugar and Cream size 4 cotton yarn. And I'm also going to be using a size G or 6 or 4 and a quarter of a millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to begin with a magic circle. So take your tail and drape it over your working yarn and pinch that intersection. Slide your crochet hook up inside the loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through your loop. And from here, we're going to be working on this side of our magic circle where we have our tail as well as our loop. And we're going to begin with a chain one and then we're going to place six single crochets inside our magic circle. And once you have your six single crochets, then pull on your tail to tighten the gap in your magic circle. And from here, we're going to skip our chain stitch. And we're going to slip stitch into the top of our first single crochet. And for our next row, we're going to chain one and place two single crochets in each of our stitches. And we're going to begin in this same stitch where we placed our slip stitch and we're just going to place our two single crochets starting there. So go ahead and place two single crochets in each stitch in your row and when you get done you should have a total of 12 single crochets. And at the end of your row, make sure you skip your tiny little slip stitch here. We're going to slip stitch into the top of our first single crochet. And for our next row, we're going to chain one and we're going to alternate between placing one and two single crochets going all the way around our row. And just like our previous row, we're going to begin in that first single crochet stitch where we've already placed our slip stitch and we want to avoid working in the slip stitch at the end of the row. So when you get done, you should have a total of 18 single crochets. And at the end of your row, you're going to skip your slip stitch as well as your chain one, and you're going to place a slip stitch in the top of your first single crochet. And for our next row, we're going to chain one, and we're going to alternate between placing one and two single crochets going all the way around our row. And just like before, we're going to begin this row in the same stitch where we placed our slip stitch and we want to avoid working in our slip stitch at the end of the row. So when you get done, you should have a total of 18 single crochets. And again, at the end of the row, we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one, and we're going to slip stitch into the top of our first single crochet. And for our next row, we're going to chain one, and we're going to place one single crochet in our first two stitches and then two single crochets in our third stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern going all the way around our row. And when we get done, we should have a total of 24 single crochets. And at the end of our row again, we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one, and we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. And for our next row, we're going to chain one and place one single crochet in our first three stitches and then place two single crochets in our fourth. And we're going to repeat that going around our row. And when we get done, we should have a total of 30 single crochets. 
And at the end of our row, we're going to skip our slip stitch as well as our chain one and slip stitch into that first single crochet. And for our next row, we're going to chain one and then place one single crochet in our first four stitches. And then we're going to place two single crochets in our fifth. And we're going to repeat that going around our row. And when we get done, we should have a total of 36 single crochets. And at the end of our row, we're going to skip our slip stitch and our chain one, and we're going to slip stitch into the top of our first single crochet. And that was our last row of increasing for our base. So from here, we're going to chain one and starting in the next stitch over, we're going to place one single crochet in the back loop only of each of our stitches. And since we didn't work in that first stitch like we've been doing in the other rows, we will work in our slip stitch at the end of the row for this row. So you should have a total of 36 single crochets when you're done. And at the end of the row, I'm going to skip my chain one and place a slip stitch in the top of my first single crochet stitch. So the pattern for this next row is going to be to chain one and then we're going to place one single crochet in each stitch in our row, starting with our next stitch and ending with our slip stitch at the end of the row. And at the end of your row, you're going to skip your chain one and then place a slip stitch in the top of your next stitch. So for this row, we're going to be working in these front loops from that single crochet in the back loop only row, as well as the top portion of our row like we normally would work. And we're going to begin by locating our current front loop, which is just directly below your crochet hook. Once you've found your current front loop, then we're going to place a triple crochet in the next front loop over. So to do that, yarn over twice and then insert your crochet hook in that front loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up through the loop. So now we have four loops on our crochet hook and we're just going to yarn over and drop two loops at a time until we complete our stitch. Once you have your triple crochet in place, go ahead and move it to the side and we're going to place one single crochet in our next three stitches working in the top row up here. So you can see this is the stitch that we've already worked. So just moving one over and we're going to place these three single crochets. From here, I'm going to show you the repeatable part of our pattern. So we're going to begin by yarning over twice, and then we're going to reinsert our crochet hook in this front loop where we've already worked, so right here. And we're going to yarn over and pull up through our loop. We have four loops again. We're going to yarn over and drop two loops at a time until we have two loops on our crochet hook. Once you have two loops on your crochet hook, you're going to yarn over once, and then you're going to skip three front loops. So this is the front loop where we just worked, so we're going to skip our next three front loops, and we're going to insert our crochet hook in this fourth front loop right here. We're going to yarn over and pull up through the loop, and then we're going to yarn over and drop two loops and then yarn over and drop three loops. So now we just crocheted our triple crochet bundle. From here, I want you to find the three stitches on your top row that sort of center around your current front loop. So for me, that's these three. And we're just going to place one single crochet in each of those three stitches.
And these three single crochets do not have to be perfectly aligned above your front loop. The most important thing is just that you get all three in. So from here, we're just going to repeat that process again. So I'm going to show it to you one more time. You're going to yarn over twice and then reinsert your crochet hook in this front loop where you just worked. Yarn over and pull up through the loop then yarn over and drop two loops at a time until you have two loops on your crochet hook. Then we're going to yarn over once and skip three front loops and insert our crochet hook in that fourth front loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up through the loop, yarn over and drop two loops, and then yarn over and drop our three loops. Then we're going to center our three single crochets above our current front loop. Again, this does not need to be perfect. So that's going to be your pattern going all the way around your row. So go ahead and repeat that process and I will meet back up with you at the end of the row to show you how to join with your very last peak. And at the end of our row, we're going to join the last front loop only where we worked with this first triple crochet. And we're going to do that the same way we've been doing by yarning over twice and inserting our crochet hook in that front loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up through the loop, yarn over and drop two loops at a time until we have two loops on our crochet hook. Again, we're going to yarn over once, but this is where it's a little wonky. What we're going to do is insert our crochet hook up underneath the post that forms this first triple crochet. So not the top portion of the stitch, but right here underneath this stem. And then we're going to yarn over and drop all the loops on our crochet hook. From here, turn your work so that you can see your top row and see this stitch that's between your working yarn and your crochet hook. You want to place a slip stitch here. And this does not have to be in this exact stitch, but this is just the easiest way I can show you which stitch I'm working in. So from here, we're going to place two rows of single crochets. So we're just going to chain one and place one single crochet back in that same stitch where we've already worked. And then we're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch in our row going all the way around. And at the end of our row, we're going to skip our slip stitch and our chain one, and we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. And we're just going to repeat that last row, chaining one and placing one single crochet in each stitch in our row, going all the way around. And again, we're going to skip our slip stitch and our chain one and place a slip stitch in the top of our first single crochet. So for this next row, we're going to continue working our diamond stitch and we're going to be working underneath the posts that form each of our peaks here, as well as the top portion of our stitch. So we're going to begin with this current peak directly below our crochet hook. So from here, we're going to yarn over twice and then insert our crochet hook up underneath these two posts that form our current peak. And we're going to yarn over and pull up through the posts. So we should have our four loops. Then we're going to yarn over and drop two loops at a time until we have two loops on our crochet hook. Once we have two loops, then we're going to yarn over once and then insert our crochet hook up underneath our next peak. Yarn over, pull up through the peak yarn over and drop two loops, and then yarn over and drop three loops. So basically, these peaks are going to take the place of these front loops only. 
and otherwise the pattern is basically the same. From here, working on the top edge of your latest row, we're going to center our three single crochets above our latest peak. And again, this does not need to be perfect, but as long as you get your three single crochets in, the pattern will probably look great. So don't get too caught up in that. So from here, we're just going to repeat our process. So we're going to yarn over twice. We're going to insert our crochet hook up underneath these two posts that form the peak that we just worked under. We're going to yarn over and pull up through the peak and then yarn over and drop our two loops at a time until we have two loops on our crochet hook. We're going to yarn over once and then insert our crochet hook up underneath our next peak, yarning over and pulling up through the peak. Then we're going to yarn over and drop two loops and yarn over and drop our last three loops. Again, we're going to place our three single crochets in the top row and we're just going to try to center these single crochets above our current peak. And so that is going to be your pattern going all the way around your row. Basically, we're just joining our peaks with new peaks. So go ahead and repeat this and I will meet back up with you at the end of the row to show you how to join the last and first peak. So at the end of the row, you're just going to follow that very same pattern to join your last peak with your first peak that you've already worked under. And once you've completed your triple crochet bundle, then you want to place one single crochet in these stitches above your first peak right here. And so now your pattern should look something like this. So to end this row, we're going to place one slip stitch in our following stitch. From here, we're going to place our two rows of single crochets. I wanted to show you, if you end up somewhere sort of off center from the top of your peak, don't hesitate to place slip stitches until you end up above your next peak. So for me, I just placed one slip stitch and now I'm sort of centered above my peak. So once you're centered above your peak, then we're just going to repeat the last row of our diamond stitch. And so from here, we're just going to repeat our last three rows over and over to build the body of our wine tote. And I followed the diamond stitch pattern until I had a total of 16 of these intersections here. And our last row should be the diamond stitch. And so at the end of your last row, where you would normally place your slip stitch, we're just going to yarn over in that slip stitch with our next color. So we're going to begin our next row with a chain two. And now we're going to place our first bead stitch so working backwards, you want to make sure you skip your slip stitch as well as the next stitch behind that. And we're going to place our bead stitch in the following stitch right here. So to place your bead stitch, yarn over and insert your crochet hook in that stitch. Then yarn over and pull up nice and long like this. Then we're going to yarn over and reinsert our crochet hook in that stitch and yarn over and pull up through. We're going to repeat that process one more time for a total of three yarn over and pull up throughs. Next, we're going to yarn over and drop all the loops on our crochet hook and chain one to complete our bead stitch. 
And for our subsequent bead stitches, we want to skip our next two stitches and then place a double crochet in that third stitch. Then working backwards, we're going to skip one stitch and then place our bead stitch in this first skipped stitch. And remember that's three yarn over and pull up throughs. Don't forget to chain one at the end of your bead stitch. So now we're just going to repeat that pattern, placing our bead stitches going all the way around our row. And when we get done, we should have a total of 12 bead stitches. And at the end of your row, you're just going to slip stitch into the top of your first bead stitch. Now we're going to chain two and turn our work. So from here, we're going to place our bead stitches in these gaps between our bead stitches. So after your chain two, you're just going to place your bead stitch right here in the gap between these two bead stitches behind your chain two. And for your next bead stitch, you're going to place a double crochet at the top of your next bead. Then you're going to place your bead stitch in the gap between your first and second bead. And we're just going to repeat this pattern going all the way around our row. And at the end of the row, we're going to slip stitch into the top of our first bead stitch here. Then we're going to chain two and turn our work and repeat our last row. So again, just working our bead stitches in the gaps between our beads. And at the end of this row, we're just going to slip stitch into the top of our first bead stitch. And then we're going to cut and tie off both strands of yarn. And I'm going to tie these two tails together and then hide all three tails down the inside of my wine tote. Please let me know in the comments below if you experienced any issues while you were making this and I will do my best to help you out. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel, Crochet with Julie. Thank you so much for working with me and I hope you have a wonderful, awesome day.